and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Junior Garcia, and here are some of the stories we have for you tonight. Carnival docks in Fredrikstad, political signs being defaced, and rising stars shine bright. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. Channel 8 News is brought to you by R3D to help balance your quality of life, a blend of herbs and phytonutrients to help support joint health. Learn more at 1-800-655-6932. R3D. In tonight's top story, passengers of the Carnival Valor cruise ship was welcomed in Fredericksted today with much fanfare. From a parade to live music, food, and more. Guests experience St. Croix's signature brand of hospitality. Let's take a look. time. We'll have more on the carnival's visit later in tonight's broadcast. In other news, with August 2nd primarily elections only four days away, police is reminding the public that the destruction of political signs is a crime punishable by law. VIPD spokeswoman Melanie Rames has more. Assistant Police Commissioner Thomas Hanna is sending a strong warning to individuals who are vandalizing political signs in the Virgin Islands. He said if you are identified by a police investigation as being involved in this destructive practice, you will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. A suspect may be charged with destruction to property and can face up to one year incarceration if convicted. Several candidates and campaign workers have approached VIPD officers and expressed their frustration as they discover their campaign signs destroyed, defaced, or damaged. The assistant commissioner said it takes a lot of effort, time, and money to get these signs out where the public can see them. He said the destruction of political signs will not likely change the outcome of a political election and may even give sympathy votes to the candidate whose signs have been vandalized. And if you see anyone vandalizing signs, please call the Emergency 911 Dispatch Center or Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS. Moving along, Commissioner of Sports, Parks and Recreation, St. Clair Williams, will stand before the Senate for the third time to give testimony on the rebuilding of the Paul E. Joseph Stadium in Fredericksted. Williams recently appeared on the Holland Redfield Straight Talk radio show to discuss his plans. Let me explain basically what, what the project is all about. Right. Because the Pauli Joseph uh, Stadium and Sports Complex, it's a really a design and construction of a AAA Mm -hmm. uh, dimension baseball field and multi-purpose now what stadium. is what is a triple a that well, means certain requirements well, that you can go ahead and have farm it, teams and yada yada, yada, yada. yeah it's, okay, yes. okay because you have double a and so forth um, okay uh, size of uh, baseball field but and then also it is also for the league field in other words we have the terence martin field there yeah okay and so also that would be a uh, part of the project wow. and also for a permanent uh st croix festival village because that's actually in yeah. Act 7453. Sure. So it's, 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 it's a big project. Right. Okay? Two for the price of and, one. And, and so that's the other thing that the amendment is doing uh, to Act 7453 to make sure 
that the scope of work includes all of these three projects. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's it's uh, it's taking away any ambiguity right. uh, that might have been there in terms of what the project is all about. Mm-hmm. And basically, what we're talking about in terms of a stadium is a three thousand five a uh, three thousand five hundred right. uh, seating capacity. Wow. Also, for the for the little league team, it'll be a seven hundred fifty to a one thousand seating capacity. Mm-hmm. And then the, the village will be we will have permanent booths. Right. Which would be ten permanent boots and then ten uh, concrete slabs that would have all the accessibility to powers, sewage, uh, water, and so forth. Right. And so, at the time when I presented this propo- uh, request for proposal, I actually included the, the festival village mm-hmm. because I believe that it would complement the, the the stadium itself, you yeah. know, and whatever else is going on there. Yeah. And there's so m- many. I believe promoters out there who would really like to do projects. There, remember when we used to have the jazz festival, uh, you had the blues festival and stuff. What used to take place right here on Saint Croix, right there at that right. stadium. Right. Okay. And I think we can be able to come back to those kinds of things in a, in, in addition to mm-hmm. uh, national and, and international sports taking place right there at the Pauly Jones right. Stadium. Me- and new tonight, police is warning that fraud is on the rise throughout the territory, with instances of credit card phone card, and cell phone scams taking place. Victims are urged to inform authorities immediately. Here is Melanie Rames with more of those details. Assistant Police Commissioner Thomas Hanna is urging persons who have been victims of credit card fraud to make a police report at your nearest police station. He said, we understand there have been a number of persons on St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Croix who have experienced credit card fraud, but our reports do not reflect that trend. The assistant commissioner said it's imperative that once a victim notifies their banking institution, the next step is to make a formal report to the proper authority, which is the police department or the attorney general's office. The assistant commissioner said contrary to at least one published report, the police department follows specific protocol when investigating fraud cases. He said in the last three months, the VIPD has received a minimal number of credit card fraud reports, but we know the problem is more widespread. The commissioner said once a report is received, the VIPD Insular Investigation Unit contacts the victim's bank and, on a case-by-case basis, reaches out to other local and federal agencies during the course of the investigation. Virgin Islands Department of Justice Special Investigator James McCall often collaborates with the Virgin Islands Police Department during these investigations. He assured the public that investigations into credit card fraud is not dormant. His advice to victims is to call the authorities as soon as it happens. McCall said these frauds are originating mainly from Florida, but can happen anywhere, and locals may be more susceptible to be defrauded using their credit cards at various bars and restaurants on the islands. According to McCall, there can be various scams circulating in the Virgin Islands at any given time. The first line of defense against fraud is to always identify suspicious charges immediately. Check your bank balances daily and report any unauthorized authorized charges to your bank and to law enforcement. The VIPD Insular Investigation Unit detectives said they are also investigating a few cases of cell phone and phone card scams. The con artists pretend to be family members with personal details of your relationship. They say that they have been hurt, lost their possessions and their cell phone, and ask for phone cards so that they can contact other family members. After spending hundreds of dollars in phone cards, the victim discovers it is a hoax. Detectives say anyone who receives a phone call saying that a relative or close friend is in trouble or hurt, try not to let your emotions and sympathy for the person overcome your common sense. Ask the person for a phone number to contact them or an address so that you can identify the information. Also attempt to contact the person at their regular cell phone number or landline. Also, you can contact their family and friends to find out the status of the person before sending any money. St. Thomas St. John Police Chief Darren Foy said the effects of widespread fraud can be detrimental to the community. He said the Virgin Islands is a small community that can be adversely affected economically and socially because of the uncertainty of being a victim of credit card fraud. The VIPD encourages you to report all 
telephonic scams, social media scams, credit card or debit card fraud that you may have information about. To report a scam, call the Virgin Islands Police Department on St. Thomas St. John at 340-774-2211, on St. Croix at 340-778 Two two one one. You can also call nine one one or Crime Stoppers USVI at one eight hundred two two two. Tips. Stay tuned. We have more news right after this. This is News Channel Eight. This is News Channel Eight. And welcome back to News Channel 8. Now here is Cynthia Graham with your nightly Caribbean report. Thank you, Junior. Malala Yousafzai, the 16-year-old Pakistani education activist, has praised Trinidad for the stance the country has taken on free education. Malala achieved international renown after she was shot by the Taliban almost two years ago for campaigning for education rights for girls and women. She arrived in Trinidad on Sunday saying that her ultimate goal is to ensure that education is free around the world. Her visit coincides with the 10th anniversary celebrations of the University of Trinidad and Tobago and she will also speak at two other engagements on the island this week. Trinidad and Tobago offers free education to children between ages 5 and 16 and is considered to be one of the most educated countries in the world. Caught between its desire to grow the economy, create jobs and cut electricity costs, as well as the negative impacts associated with building an oil refinery, the Antigua and Barbuda government is looking to a mix of clean energy and fossil fuels to address its energy needs. This will in fact result in significant extension of periods of drought as a result of fluctuations in temperature. This is also happening at a time when there are so many options that could deal with part of the energy challenge, Martin said. He suggested instead that the Antiguan government look to sources like biofuel, solar and wind energy to reduce reliance on crude oil. And finally tonight, brighter days are ahead for St. Lucia, according to Prime Minister Kenny Anthony. He says he is optimistic on the outlook for the country's economy. Speaking at a convention recently held in St. Lucia, the Prime Minister said investment is slowly returning to the island nation. Two years ago, four of our major hotel properties were in distress and in the hands of receivers appointed by banks, Anthony said. Today, all four properties have new owners and new management. Recent estimates show that in 2012, St. Lucia received $109.4 million in foreign direct investment, according to data from the World Bank. And this has been tonight's Caribbean Report. I'm Cynthia Graham. We'll be back here tomorrow to bring you more news and views from in and around the Caribbean. Junior, back to you. And thank you, Cynthia. Moving along, today's Carnival Valor visit did not only provide a boom for local businesses in Frederickstead, youngsters on St. Croix also benefited from the visit with the Carnival's generous donation of more than 2,000 books. It's truly a honor and a privilege to be here and stand in as a representative of our 3,000 passengers who are here today as part of Blue World Travel's Festival at Sea annual Caribbean cruise. We have chartered the ship and we have come as vacationers to enjoy what the Caribbean has to offer and our passengers are definitely excited about enjoying what St. Croix has to offer during today's visit. But while we're on vacation, we also know that we have a responsibility to share and to give back. And one thing that unites our passengers who come from all over the United States, as well as from the UK and Barbados, is that we share a desire to make sure that the spirit of learning and the flame of discovery stays alive. 
Consequently, behind me you see several boxes that are overflowing with gifts. Gifts of knowledge, gifts of inspiration, and gifts of what can happen next. And so our passengers have dug deep and made a contribution by purchasing a book or two to give. Welcome to beautiful St. Croix. Welcome to the historic town of Frederickstead, which is also known as Freedom City. On uh, behalf of the Department of Planning and Natural Resources, Division of Library, Archives, and Museums, Commissioner Alicia V. Barnes could not be here today, but Blue World Travel, thank you so much for this generous donation. It's a wonderful gift. Gifts and donations are always welcomed, but books especially are invaluable gifts. Why? Books are for a lifetime. Books are gifts for a lifetime. They can be passed down from generation to generation. Thank you, and I'm sure those books will be put to good use. Stay with us. We have more news straight ahead. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. And finally tonight, St. Croix's Rising Stars Ute Steel Orchestra has provided decades of musical excellence here in the territory and abroad. Channel 8's summer intern Alexis Barnes recently spent some time with the group to find out just what makes them tick. It's considered the only acoustic musical invention of the 20th century. A sound so synonymous with the Caribbean. A sound that can only come from the steel pen. The Rising Stars Youth Steel Orchestra in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands uses this instrument to keep youth on the island on the right track. It, it helps to prevent school dropout as part of the crime prevention responsibility of the Superior Court and to help decrease juvenile delinquency. We provide an environment here where they can come to learn, learn music, provide a home away from home. Like I said, the main objective is to help them graduate high school. We get people like lawyers and you know, to lecture them, give them a little information on, you know, why they should stay off the streets and so forth. While the mainland National High School graduate average reached its highest of 80% in 2013, the Virgin Island Department of Education and No Child Left Behind reported St. Croix's 2012 rate at 60.4%, the most recent year statistics available. The program helps with SAT prep and college applications along with education in the history and techniques of the steel pan instrument. It's very unique. Um, for me, I started at the age of nine years. I've been doing this for 25 years. It's something that I love doing, so I would like to pass it on. I like excitement, and the steel drum is a lot of excitement. I feel like it's my second home to be here at Rising Stars. I've been in it for five years now. One thing about the steel pan is it's a local instrument. With roots in Trinidad, the instrument was born from frying pans, dustbin lids, and oil drums after various African percussion were banned in the late 1800s and mid-1900s. It was soon realized that the constant pounding on the metal changed the pitch of the sound. Once you get a drum, any drum, an oil drum specifically, once you groove certain areas and they're separated, if you have a large area, it's, it's going to give you a lower sound, like the bass, and if you high, have a, a small area, you'll get a high pitch, like when somebody's singing.
Reporting from Frederickstead in St. Croix, United States Virgin Islands, this is Alexis Barnes. This is Alexis Barnes reporting from Frederickstead in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Excellent work, Alexis. Rising Stars is indeed one of our local treasures. Well, stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We have your weather coming up next. Your weather coming up next. Your weather. And here's a look at your local weather. Tonight will be mostly clear with a low of 69 degrees. Tomorrow, expect sunny skies and a high of 83. On Wednesday night, mostly clear in the evening, then increasing clouds with some scattered thunderstorms after midnight, a low of 71 degrees. On Thursday, scattered thunderstorms possible throughout the day and into the evening, a low of 82 and a high of 70 percent. On Friday, thunderstorms are being predicted earlier in the day with a high of 82 degrees. In the evening, there's a low of 72 and a 20% chance of rain with isolated thunderstorms. This has been Alexis Barnes with your Channel 8 News Weather. Thank you very much for tuning in. That's all we have for local news. Do not forget to like us on Facebook at WSVICHA. And also follow us on Twitter at WSVITV News. And be sure to subscribe to Channel 8 on your YouTube at WSVI-TV News Channel 8. Watch us on your computer, plus use the free Dish Anywhere app to DVR us or see us anywhere in the world on your smartphone or tablet. I'm Junior Garcia, and World News is up next. Good night, Virgin Islands. Channel 8 News is brought to you by R3D to help balance your quality of life, a blend of herbs and phytonutrients to help support joint health. Learn more at 1-800-655-6932. R3D.